Hello, everyone. I'm Joe Burchell along with Quincy Alexander. We're in Winchester, Kentucky, on the campus of George Rogers Clark High School for hoops action here on the Wazoo Sports Network. And uh, Quincy, a couple of teams on a roll here. Well, a seven-game winning streak for the visitors from Rowan County, an eight-game winning streak for the homestanding Cardinals. Something's got to give tonight, of course, as you mentioned in the open there. Both teams playing very well right now, but I think Clark County has got to be the hottest team in the state right now. They've only taken one quarter off in about the last month and a half, and it almost came back to bite them against Western in the championship game of the Toyota Classic. I would suspect that they'll come out pretty hot tonight. Rowan County is going to have to withstand the pressure early if they want to stay in a ball game with the Cardinals. It's going to be a good measuring stick for the Vikings, and we'll find out how that transpires a little bit later. Well, so we're going to check out some of the players uh, that will be featured in this contest tonight. First, for the Vikings of Rowan County, the main man, the transfer that has come in, D.J. Townsend. He knows Coach Thacker's system, and he is learning these players, and he said to me earlier tonight that he really likes this team, and he likes uh, how they complement his game. They've all kind of come together. You can see 16, been out 16 points a game. He drops about four dimes a game, and 50% from the floor. The junior can really get out and hoop, and he does a lot for them by taking taking the pressure off of his fellow running mate, Adam Wing. On the other side, for Clark County, of course, it's old reliable. It's Robbie Stenzel. He gets things done. He's actually been battling the flu, but at the Toyota Classic, look at that, nearly 20 points a game.
shot, he might have had that rebound. Exactly. They haven't even gone to their leading scorer, Corey Rogers, inside yet. They tried the first trip down and he threw it away. And there's Wing with the kickoff all the way up and under. And they've closed with a 6-0 run. They're right back in this game. Well, Clark County, a little uncharacteristic. Five turnovers already here in the first quarter. Robbie Stenzel. Rogers has it backed away and picked off by the freshman Thacker. And they throw it away. He had Daryl Cross already down in position for that pass, and he decided to take a different angle down to Adam Wing. You got to go with what now watch DJ. He goes he goes to the middle of the floor the way he's supposed to. But instead of going behind you on the pass, why not drop that off to Daryl Cross? He's already ahead of you or take another dribble up. He was trying to up. avoid the charge. Another turnover by the cards. Bopper Stenzel's done a pretty good job in transition, forcing the ball handler to make a decision. Are you going to come in and get the charge or are you going to drop it off? And so far, everybody's decided to drop it off because Bopper Stenzel's been set up. He's yep. taken seven charges this year to lead the team. Well, bucket right here, and uh, Rowan County can end with a flurry. They're on a 6-0 run right now. There's the shot by Townsend. Got it off the glass. We got a ball game here at Letcher Norton Gymnasium. Back DJ, in a moment. DJ Townsend, that's the kind of bucket that he'll hit for you time and time again. And DJ Townsend, look at him. He comes off the screen, no daylight whatsoever, and he finds a way to put it off the glass and get Rowan County within two. I had her take the lead right here. I tell you what, Rowan County didn't hang their head one bit, did they? They kept fighting, and they're right back in this ball game. Look at here. Cross all the way up, way up, and he got the bounce. How in the world did he make that shot fall? That was that defied physics. The way that came back down into the into the basket. I spell that. T H A T. Good job. I got you. <laughs> we got to talk. Joe. It's that's crazy. Zolo puts the cards back on top. He ends that 11-0 run by the Vikings. Zolo's playing uh, with a whole different swagger now since coming back from that injury. There's the freshman, Tyler Thacker, son of the head coach. Scooted that one over, picked up by Hunter. And now Wing will work against Rodgers. How about a 6-1 freshman? Goodness. Cross, good defense by Stenzel. Hey, how about defense by Bopper up there denying the ball away from D.J. Townsend? Wing fires. I like the aggressiveness there. Picked off. Cross. It's a foot race. He's going to win it most of the time. I would say, I mean, he's got eight already, Joe, and the football player taking over. There's yep. another football player that they'll start going to on the other side, though. Rogers double teamed. Well, wow, Zolo made a terrific pass to Jalen Daniel. That was that was pretty. Bounds and pulls. Daniel at six seven really moves well with and without the basketball. He, he has improved so much. Zolo, no, battling for it. Corey Rogers says, I'm not going to be denied. Three attempts, he'll oh, have to get them at the foul line. It, it didn't fall, but you got to give some credit to the big fella inside. Corey Rogers stayed with it. I mean, played volleyball with it over guys bigger than him, as he always does. He creates so much space in there and just keeps going back up with it. you got to get a body on Corey Rogers and keep him away from the basket. That was one of the keys that was given to me by the coaching staff. We've got to keep them off the boards. It's got to be one and done if we want even a chance in this ball game. Purvis back in. Zolo will take a rest. Big, big loss here for Rowan. Corey Hunter, two fouls. The 6'7", 205-pound senior has to go to the bench. Replaced by Brandon Goodpaster, a 6'4 junior who averages three a game. D.J. Townsend, the junior, leads this team in scoring at over 15 a game. Nice little move. Didn't get it. Didn't have enough mustard on the bread. Well, he's a playmaker, and those those are the kind of things you can do. Uh, but he, he, they've got to move the ball a little bit and make Clark County work on defense. Purvis, nice move, but over the back. That'll be his second. 
Well, again, the depth of Clark County. I don't know how much that hurts him early in the game here to see Purvis go to the bench. Love his passion, the way he's been playing lately, but this is a deep Clark County team. Cross has had a big first half. There's Thacker, the freshman, takes it all the way in on Daniel. Thought right. he drew a foul. No call. Here comes the cards. Right now, Rowan. County used a lot of emotional energy with that championship and they won the high it caliber competition. Yeah. But Round County's come to play. They're a good ball club. They're just not able to convert right now on the offensive end. They're they're struggling to put the ball in the hole. Rogers. Oh wow! Hit, hit the deck. His wing and a three by Jalen Daniel. Coach Thackeray ordered a charge. Didn't get it. Jalen Daniel has come to play. Bopper Stenzel, his team up six. Three second violation inside. Watch this, Corey Rogers, the spin, not enough contact there, and Jalen Daniels wide open, late rotation, get the three. Perry Mason, the Perry Mason could have made a good case. Could have, but he didn't. And he didn't win, he didn't lose any cases. I, he'd have lost that one. <laughs> that was that was a textbook flop. He was heading down before Rogers even made contact. Zolo back in. They're big now. They got four guys in there, six, seven or better, Quince. Shot up no good, and Cross will go to the line. This, what what we was I saying see, about the depth of Clark County? Yeah, That's we don't why. usually see these four on the floor at the same time. Challenging the big fellas there, Cross. I actually thought that uh, Purvis got a piece of that ball. He just told DJ Towns and Coach Thacker said, you got to get to the rim like that. Take it, take a page out of Cross's book. Adam Fatkins about to check in. 6'6 six, six sophomore, number 24. Purvis will go out. Cross has been huge. He's got 10. That's almost double figures, Quincy. <laughs> 10 is double figures, I'm, Joe. I'm, I'm, I know. <laughs> Perry Mason would eat you alive on that statement. Come on now. Uh. <laughs> or better yet, that is double figures, right? Yeah. Inside, Rogers uh, with the left hand. Corey Rogers, every time I see him work on the baseline and in the post area, he just has so many moves. He, he doesn't worry about the contact. Uh, the key word was work. He works hard every time. He's taking a visit to the University of Kentucky to take a look at their football program. Wow, next big three by number 12, Adam Wing. They needed that bad, Joe. They needed a, they needed something to fall for Adam. Well, he averages 13 a game, seven rebounds, and he's the leader of this team. Fatkin out to Zolo. It's an opportunity. This is a spot, you know, Coach Humphrey always talks about picking the spots in the half court, and this he wants to he wants to draw something up right here for Clark County so they have an opportunity in the half court. And Rowan County right now, they've got to find a way to stop that guy. Look at him, one dribble down the baseline, easy finish right around the rim for Corey Rogers. Then on the other side, Adam Wing sizes up Fadkin, crossover, dead eye shooter from the top of the key, and Adam Wing gets going. Then you've got DJ Townsend doing what he's doing. Daryl Cross is getting going. Rowan can make this a ball game for a while if those three guys can continue to be active and find ways to score. Well, after falling behind 13 to two, the Vikings regrouped and it looked for a moment that uh, they might get blowed out of here early. Well, like I said earlier, Rowan County, they withstood that run. Uh, 11 points was the big lead, 13 to two, and then 
Back came the Vikings. Well, let's see what play they've drawn up here. You know, when they get, <laughs> take a timeout, they go to 44. A lot of times they do, Joe. But usually it's down in the post. The big fella got it that time from the high post. Mid-range jump shot. Pounds and pulls up. A little contact on the shot. No, Zolo pulls it off and then threw it out of bounds. You know, nope, it was deflected. In this, in this huddle over here, we, we have the uh, fortunate spot to be sitting right next to the Round County huddle. He had just talked about shot selection, and that was not what they wanted there on the baseline by DJ Townsend. I think Townsend might have either got brazed or uh, grazed, rather, or uh, just off balance. But look at the, the effort defensively by DJ. Misses a shot on the other side, doesn't hang his head, comes down here, gets into a passing lane. That's what you like to see uh, from a young player, at the, the junior, get back on defense. We're approaching two minutes. It's the type of score that Rowan County wants. They want exactly. to keep this thing in the, at least the mid-60s. Right. Absolutely. Rogers powers it up, way up, almost hit the top of the backboard. But he stayed with it again. I mean, he will battle you to death for that basketball. He will get a rebound if he's even close to it. In the vicinity, he will work. He will outwork everybody under the basket. Zolo finds Rogers in a great spot. Rogers shows the ball. A lot of green jerseys around him. Look at that, three of them. And he still out gets, outworks everybody and earns a trip to the line. Looked like that ball might have actually hit the top of the backboard. As long as it doesn't hit the structure holding it, it's not out. Well, I wasn't oh, talking okay. about Ill illegal ar it did. arrest. It I, didn't say, yeah. I didn't say Barney Five needs to arrest. <laughs> <laughs> I just I thought it hit the top. It did. That's, what I'm saying is that's a high archer. Yeah, he was trying to get it. I mean, the defense was there. He's trying to get it over the outstretched arms. Cross, little floater missed everything here comes the cards the running length, the length of clark county starting to really bother rowan wow nobody picked up bopper here comes the green team the vikings three on one four on one townsend up and in oh take it away they call a charge wow four Rob, on one and robbie Rob stenzel found a way to get back and get in position watch him the veteran standing still got underneath him might have been a hair late but the official gave him the benefit of the call there against dj townsend There's that 2-2-1 two, two, pressure zone defense. Knocked away, rescued by the big man. <laughs> the coaching staff said a shooter over there. Against Clark County, there's a shooter all over the floor. Everybody can. There's a double foul called right here, Joe. They get Vinny Zolo. And 12, that's Adam Wing, Adam Wing on Rowan. There's Coach Thacker claiming the, the other guy did it first. Well, he was saying that there was a couple elbows before he saw Adam react. I didn't see it. I was looking across the court to the wide open Robbie Stenzel and how they adjusted to that. Uh, bopper Stenzel will... Set the offense. But if you noticed, Vinny left it alone. He didn't say anything. There's a phrase, and I'll get to that. In a, oh, wow. big block by Adam. But Rogers back up. No, boy, they, it's getting physical out there. Adam Wing comes out of there with it. Well, I, what I was going to say is you, you noticed that Vinny didn't say anything. There's a phrase painted on the locker room that says, shut up and play. And that's a, that's a mantra through practice and through games that Coach Humphrey wants them to see. He says, let them uh, focus on playing the game. Look at the big block there by Adam Wing. Rotates down, does a great job. And somehow, Corey Rogers still got the rebound there. But the Vikings played great defense on the interior that time. <laughs> Bodies out over the place. Yeah, carnage under the basket. Townsend will trigger it in. Wing looking for an opening, wide open to Egan. Yeah, but the length of Daniel kept him from putting that up. Nice effort, and Wing draws the foul. Adam Wing earned every bit of that trip to the line. You take a shot from Corey Rogers, no matter how big or small it is, you're going to feel it as you go to the floor. Well, Corey wants to know what he did, but uh, there was a little bump there as Adam came through on the second fake. Quincy, should I try it? He's an 83% free throw shooter. <laughs> Look what you did. 
Adam Wing. He's going to get it in the post and work against Corey Rogers, a pretty good post defender. And there's the foul. There was a backdoor cut there that he didn't get a, hand, get a chance to see. And that was good defense by Corey Rogers. Josh Bernard, a 6'5 sophomore, checking into the game. Number 52, replacing Wing. Bernard averaging two points a game. Played in the JV game earlier. They list him at 6'5". I don't think so. <laughs> Purvis. Well, um, I got to say that that might be a makeup call for the Robbie Stenzel charge earlier. Let's take a look here as jo Josh Bernard, the sophomore, he's fallen sideways as Purvis comes through. But that is the third on Travis Purvis, and he will go and take a seat nevertheless. All right, if you're around, Kenny, I think you try to take this last shot and at least go down no worse than five points after trailing 13 to two. Well, Purvis will go to the bench, four points, three rebounds, and three fouls. And this is an opportunity for Rowan, like you said, get four. that last shot so they don't have to go down by any more than five here. Townsend off to Egan. He's wide open. No, that's not Egan. That's a shot by Brandon Goodpaster. That wasn't a bad shot, but it wasn't the shot they wanted. Well, it was too early. One, well, when you're open, you're open. I mean, I what, what they what ended up happening, and that should have rotated back around to a playmaker. I'm not taking anything away from good passer, but I guarantee that's not what they drew up. Well, he was wide open from about 16 feet. You got to have that shot. He just missed it, but it's going to give the Cardinals a chance. Robbie Stenzel. He's not going to get a shot off, and we got a good one going here. There's Coach Thacker heading for the locker room, and he's got to feel pretty good right now. He's got plenty to talk about, yeah. Joe. We'll be back. I think he has to love the way his team is competing. And uh, Clark County, if you coach Humphrey, they've made a lot of turnovers. Well, that's true, and that's what's got him in this, you know, just a five-point lead. Now, Round County never did take the lead. They tied it a couple of times against Clark County, but they came all the way back, and it was early on, it was Cross doing it all. I mean, that was the first bucket of the ball game right there for Darrell Cross. He had 10 points, and then D.J. Townsend got himself going just a little bit, but still not to his standards. I mean, he's only got five right now, but that's his game. That little mid-range jump shot, he missed quite a few of those early and then he banked that three in late at the end of the first quarter that uh, brought him back within two. Uh, and then a little bit inside, that was the only interior bucket that wasn't transition, and that was cross. And then Adam Wing did a little crossover dribble up top on Adam Fatkin to get it to go from the top of the key. And Adam Wing has six points. Only three guys scored for Rowan County. And then Clark County got going. Even Bopper Stenzel got into it, going right down the pipe. Nobody stepped over. Purvis uh, was uh, missed that opportunity. And Vinny Zolo back in action and tonight after that ankle injury. Got that one to go. Vinny Zolo had four points. And then the uh, jumper there by Robbie. And then Jalen Daniel, look at him finish with some contact, kind of extended his arm a little bit to keep the defender off of him. And then Corey Rogers, a little extra contact there, kicks it out. Jalen Daniel led all, all of George Rogers Clark scorers with 10 points, the 6'7 senior. And it's interesting, at 6'7, you think he's going to be in transition a lot. He's going to score in the post. He actually leads them in three-point percentage with 42%. We'll uh, take a break, come back with the second half. Stay with us. Letcher Norton Gymnasium, almost ready for the third quarter here at uh, Winchester, Kentucky. The Gianna Chicken Shirt, Guy Strong, former uh, player at Irvin, Kentucky, went on to play for Adolph Rupp at Kentucky, coached here at Clark County, Louisville Mail, and also uh, at EKU. And the gentleman behind him was uh, Jerry Thornsbury. He, he and his twin brother, uh, Larry, along with Linville Puckett, played for Coach Norton when they won the 51 state title. So a little history in the house tonight. There's Egan, nope. Purvis battles for the rebound. I remember Purvis has three fouls. Jalen Daniel. He doesn't miss many in transition. Uh, he went a little bit too casual on that one, didn't he? Yeah, and then all of a sudden popped open, didn't realize what was going on there. Didn't finish strong. D.J. Townsend. Go 
Well, we'll see what kind of X's and O's were drawn up here at halftime. Well, they've called cross for an illegal screen. That's his second. Well, you know, you pick up little nuances. Coach Thacker here has Skittles on our table and ever so often comes to get him a handful. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Daniel with a long three in the corner. That's his last two buckets from the floor have been from three. When he gets going from outside, man, that is dangerous territory because then you got to respect his jump shot. Then Robbie Stenzel can get going from three as well. Of course, you got to respect that all the time. Jalen Daniel, his reach, uh, he'll get you every time defensively. And then you watch this rotation, Joe. Bopper Stenzel sees that the defense is lagging as he comes around on the baseline, and he just squares up in the corner. He's got a big upside, great-looking future. I haven't got to hear much about his college list, but I bet it's growing. Pounds and pulls up, knocks it down from about 10 feet. Now, did I tell you, that's his shot, and those weren't falling early for him. But if they get going, that changes Rowan County's offense altogether. Robbie Stenzel did not feel well in the Toyota Classic, but certainly played outstandingly and still not 100%. His brother, Bopper, knocks down a three. Yeah, we saw that down the, at, at Scott County, that Bopper can hit the outside shot a little bit. He does shoot only about 21% from three, but every now and then he can get going, get squared up, and hit you one. Adam Wing inside, up by Hunter. Nice pass, good play. Is that a 2-3 or 2-2-1? Two, two, There's Stenzel, wow, wanting a running one-hander. That's the first basket of the game for Robbie Stenzel. Townsend picked away. Here comes Robbie Stenzel. Pulled off of Jason Egan. It's Townsend fires. Nope. Get the top of the backboard. It'll go to the home team, the Cardinals. Vinny Zolo back in. Well, the post game for Rowan County, it's been few and far between because of the length of uh, uh, for George Rogers Clark, but that time a great job by Corey Hunter to get a seal on Purvis on his opposite hip and spin back toward the basket and have an open look. He's in range right now. That's his shot. Well, I don't think Corey Rogers was expecting that pass. But his hands, he still found a way to catch the basketball. That was nice by Corey. But Vinny Zolo's got to be aware of the proximity of the offensive player there inside. That's a, that's a bullet pass in, in uh, point-blank range. Well, wow, Darrell Cross has played awfully well tonight. Cross. Still hanging around. Well, there's always going to be fight in a Coach Thacker team, that's for sure. Bopper gets the top of the backboard. The, the rims have been interesting tonight. Uh, by, a lot of shots have come off and gone over the backboard. Hakeem Moore into the game for Robbie Stenzel. Robbie's not quite right. He, I think he, he told me before the game he, he doesn't feel like he has his legs. You know when you come off of being sick for a couple of days, he just doesn't feel strong right now, and that's, that's why he hasn't quite been himself. Cross pulls up. Daniel with the board. Zolo up off the glass. And that's Vinny Zolo's game, spinning away from the basket, finding a way, uh, either a hook or, or a tough one-hander like that. Not very often is he going to go in and bang with you, but he'll create some contact and fall away and have nice touch. Going to play for the Hilltoppers in Bowling Green. Of course, he's more focused at playing in Rupp in March. At this point. Egan knocks down the three. And they need that. The Vikings have to have Egan as a shooter on the outside, a 6-2 junior. That's a big shot that will make the defense come out and, and spread out a little bit and have to defend that shooter. Zolo's going to try a three. May not be the shot that Coach Humphrey wanted. Here comes the Vikings. They can get a little bit closer. Townsend. 
You know, looking to get Egan off, but he, he can't with Jalen Daniel up close on to him. Wing's going to try it. Wow, look at Egan up. No, battle over the back. I think Daniel. Daniel didn't block out in the first place, and that's what happens. When you don't get a body on the shooter, they're going to be the first one to know where the ball's coming off, and that's three on Daniel. Clark County getting into a little serious foul trouble. Robbie Stenzel back in. Jalen Daniel always makes it look so easy. It doesn't look like he's playing hard, but trust me, he is. Adam Wing, this is a good matchup. Look at the block by Rogers. You can't, as strong as Adam Wing is, you can't out-physical Corey Rogers. Vinny Zolo, 6'9", running the floor with a fast break. And that's another strength of his game. He can get out and go with you. See, now Adam Wing has to think about it a little bit when he goes in against Corey Rogers. Good matchup here, Townsend and... and uh, Moore. Moore's a great defender, but I think Townsend, if he could get position down toward the block, he can actually post up more. Egan, little four shot maybe. They've been talking about shot selection over here on the sideline all night. Hakeem Moore, nope, rebound wing. Gets it up to cross. He challenges Robbie Stenzel. Wow, rebound Hunter. That was a nice drive to challenge the defense. Robbie couldn't get there in time, and the big fella, Corey Hunter, six foot seven senior, was in the right place at the right time, able to turn around and put it back in. Let's watch again as it comes off the rim there. Adam Wing gets it and gets out in transition to cross, goes and attacks the defense. Robbie was not set. Good no call there. And Corey Hunter able to put it back in. And that is a big shot because it brings him back within six, Joe. And Vinny Zolo's been really going to work here in the second half, and, and, and it's really good to see because of the way that he's coming off of an inner injury, and he's got to kind of get back in the swing of things. Look at him here, catching the post, swing back around to the open spot in the floor, put it up with one hand and put it in. Vinny Zolo is a special piece to this puzzle for Clark County. Their depth is big. There's the block to Corey Rogers. Bopper Stenzel gets it out and shovels it underneath, and a nice little drive by Vinny Zolo. You know, with him down, they are deep enough to survive for a little bit, but he's an integral part of what they're trying to do down the stretch to make it back to Rupp. Daniel takes it all the way to the goal, and nope, couldn't get it to go. Long pass down to Cross. Adam Wing for a three. Cross tried to tip it out to him, but Rob well, I can tell you what Coach Thacker wanted to say to DJ Tan Townsend right there. You've got to pull that down. Don't try to tip it out. Zolo knocks down a three. Wow. And he's Zolo. He's, that, that's five threes on the year. And the lead is back to nine. Well, we didn't think he was going to play when we came here, and he's played awfully well. There's a great potential three-point play there by Townsend. Great effort by DJ Townsend. I mean, he is a playmaker in the first place. He goes up gets the contact, and is able to put it off the glass. This is a nice move here. That's off the elbow. Goes back with it. Now there's the contact and off the glass. A great job by D.J. Townsend to stay with it and go after the defender. Coach Thacker's got a nice ball club. Boy, what a luxury to have a guy like D.J. Townsend that knows your system a little bit and come in to help you. I don't know who the most famous alumni is from Rowan County, but there's a guy coaching right now in the college ranks that played for Rowan County. Kelly. Kelly Wells? Yeah. At right. Vi yeah, he, he went to the state tournament three times with the, with the Vikings, later coached Mason County to a state championship and a runner-up. Now he's at Pikeville College. Well, that's probably why he has the in, had the inside track on Cody Hunter that played here last year and why Corey Hunter's taking a look at Pikeville. I think you might have a point there. <laughs> <laughs> in road, shall we say. Yeah, he has, he has a direct link. Of course, uh, also Asbury taking a little bit of a look at uh, Corey Hunter because one of the assistant coaches on the bench for Coach Thacker is uh, Jordan Mann. Of course, that was Coach Humphrey over on Clark County side, but uh, Jordan Mann on the bench, one of the assistant coaches, played at Asbury and played at Somerset under Coach Thacker. Right now, the Vikings are trying to get a little bit closer. Townsend with a strong move. Zolo bothered that shot. 
That's the big advantage to having Vinny out there. 6'9", attacks the basketball, always there for a shot block. Rogers wide open, knocks down the 12-footer. He has such nice touch for the big guy. He's I a really, really, yeah. really good high school basketball player, absolutely. Leading scorer on this ball club. A lot of people may not realize that. I think uh, Robbie's starting to catch up to him a little bit after his performance at the Toyota Classic. But, uh -huh. yeah, but Corey Rogers does lead this team in scoring. They better hurry. They want to get this last shot. They're down eight. Bucket right here would be big. <laughs> up, no good. Wing at the horn. Wow, no good. Boy, they've had a tough time with the length of Clark County and the defense being active in the lanes, and they've got a tough fourth quarter coming up. Fourth. 745-2991, call them up. A little slice of Italy right here in Winchester. We had some of that pizza for the Wazoo crew. A special thanks to Giovanni's right here in Winchester over on Boone Avenue. Again, 745-2991 for Giovanni's. Can I say something? No. Dining room service or carry out. <laughs> well, I'm Good glad you way. did then. <laughs> I'll tell you, this fourth quarter is set up for Rowan County. I mean, this is the score that they, they want a low scoring game. They need to be methodical. They need to get a couple of buckets and a couple of stops, string them together, and find a way to stay in this game long enough to make a run because Clark County knows how to put the pedal to the metal in the fourth quarter. We saw that over uh, against Western in that championship game. So if they're going to stave off the run by Clark County, they've got to start on this possession to string together a couple of buckets and a couple of stops. What'd you say? <laughs> I, I can do it all again for you if you want. <laughs> There's the freshman Tyler Thackeray in the corner. They go inside the Hunter. Turns on Zolo. Coach Thackeray wanted contact called, and here comes the cards. They can add the Zolo lost the handle. And it was last touched. I, think I they, thought it was last touched by the Cardinals, but he's pointing that it stays down for uh, Clark County. Well, I believe. Anyway, it's the. Clark County ball. Bopper Stenzel, no. Zolo with, an, with another rebound. I've got him with nine, but I, you know, I don't know about my he, Another three. Nope. And Cross is in a hurry. See, the ball don't lie. <laughs> Adam Wing knocks down the three. And That's a three. big shot. Five-point ball game. Coach Humphrey may not want Zolo taking threes. You hit one, sometimes you get that. <laughs> get the big I eye. I won't say false confidence, <laughs> but he's not a great three-point shooter. You get the big eye, don't you, Joe? He, he can develop. But Moore, they, do, they got him hemmed in. See what he does here. He That's an offensive foul. He bowls over Hunter. Corey Rogers is really good at getting in and creating contact and being able to go up and through it. But this time, watch him lower the shoulder as he comes through. Boom. Right there is the contact that was illegal. Normally, he does a good job of getting up into a defender instead of straight down with the shoulder. And that's where he made the mistake that time. So good defense by Rowan. That's his third. And the Vikings can get a little bit closer. DJ Townsend, the 5'10 junior to wing. Good job by Daniel to fight through the screen. It's a mismatch right here, though. Cross can probably take Jalen Daniel off the dribble. DJ Townsend steps on the baseline. Tough yep. when you're down five, you don't, you don't get a shot. That was a really nice drive, though. He just didn't realize where he was on the baseline. Coach Thacker's got to like the effort of his team right now. I'm glad they don't have that baseline at a buffet. I'd be hurting. Be hurting. Turn it can over. Can you imagine buddy. having to put it up and go back again? That'd be tough. <laughs> Zolo cross court nearly picked off by Tyler Thacker. Yeah, he, he was a, a fingernail away from pulling that one down and going the other direction. You don't clip them on game day, do you, Clint? No, nope, you, you got to have it. Don't bite them off on game day. Inside to Rogers, he's going to be fouled by Hunter. Corey Hunter got his hand uh, stuck in the cookie jar there. As, as Corey Rogers came up, his hand just got caught up. And it wasn't so much a foul coming down with the hand as it was just kind of there as he came up and threw. Corey Rogers, 6'4", actually 6'5", center. See, Joe, I know you were thinking about his free throw percentage there. That's what happened. You were 64. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Nine for Corey. Darrell Cross, who's played very well tonight. A quick move. And they're going to get Bopper Stenzel for the reach in. I, I just watched Adam Wing suggest a play to the bench, and they said, okay, go ahead. So whatever this play is, Adam Wing decided that's what they wanted to run. And apparently it went off D.J. Townsend. He never did catch it. Yep. Apparently they didn't run the play right. Hakeem Moore is going to take a seat, Joe, and Travis Purvis is back. He's become a fan favorite of our crew, I think, Travis Purvis, with what he what he did during the Toyota Classic. Well, I, I think he's I think he plays with a lot of passion. And he plays hard. He is just an added bonus for this Cardinal team. Little reach. Well, little reach. Get Thacker for reaching in on Zolo. And yep. The be, official. <laughs> it's not one and one yet. Well, when the official chuckles and, and talks to the, the kid after calling a foul, I like that. Egan's going to come in, and Coach Thacker got some pretty good play out of Tyler there off the bench. When, when Coach Thacker came, of course, Somerset uh, – didn't like to lose him as a coach, but I bet they hated to lose his son, a 6'1", uh, eighth grader at the time. They, Round County allowed Corey Rogers to get that ball right under the goal from the inbounds pass, and that's a no-no. Yeah, you let Corey Rogers catch it that deep, and it's all over. All she wrote. It's been a good game, and still quite a bit of time left. Round County's done a good job of keeping the score where they want it. They've slowed it down. Now they've got to take advantage and cash in here in the fourth quarter. Cross pulls up. Oh, rattle out. I thought that was down. Those are the kind of shots that uh, have not been falling for, for the Vikings tonight, and it's been tough. Daniel's in range right now for that three if he wants to shoot it. Outside of Daniel. Four and a half to go. This plays right into what Clark County wants to do with a lead like this. They can pick their spots and play half court with you. Yeah, they're going to have to come out and get them. They're going to let that clock pick. I think they're going to have to. Yep, Purvis <laughs> says, uh-oh, three-point time. <laughs> How about Travis Purvis step out and hit a three? Hadn't played a lot of minutes tonight because of foul trouble. Man, what kind of role is that kid on over the last week or two? You've had a three from a 6-7 Purvis and 6-9 Zolo here in the second half. Egan knocks down the three. What you can do, I can do better. He needed it, and Egan is the shooter for Brown County. I mentioned it earlier. That's his second three of the ball game, and they're going to have to run some plays to get him some open looks. Let's watch the big fella, Purvis, right outside the three-point line. Got it to go. Fear the beard, number 40 for Clark County. Into the corner, then Egan. He's the guy you know can shoot from there. And in the corner, you give him that kind of daylight. It's going down for 15 in green. Glad you joined us here on the Wazoo Sports Network. He's Quincy and I'm Joe and all the Wazoo crew. We're glad to have you aboard on this Tuesday night here in Winchester, Kentucky. And a little weather is supposed to happen overnight. Well, we were talking about the winning streaks uh, for these two teams. Uh, you know, Rowan County did it against the likes of Bath County and Breathitt, Montgomery County, Russell and Boyd County. But then you look at the murderer's row uh, that Coach uh, Humphrey and the George Rogers Clark Cardinals have had to go up against. It's been Scott County, Montgomery, Warren Central, Covington Catholic, Christian County, Western out of Louisville. And a lot of teams out of state. <laughs> I mean, I'm just talking about on the winning streak yeah. recently. There's uh, Purvis got ahead of the pack, and the lead is 10. Well, that all started with the pass from Zolo, the vision in transition. They break that press better than a lot of teams across the state. Win, lose, or draw, I think Coach Thacker's bunch is going to gain some confidence out of this. Well, and going into the 61st district, Rowan County will need a measuring stick game like this, and I think they've played admirably for sure. Adam Wing up and goaltending. Yep. Well, we're talking about the number two team in Kentucky, Clark I County. Agree. This one, I don't know if it was going to go in or not, but it was headed down. Yeah, it looked like it wasn't even going to get rimmed, but Daniel got up and knocked it away. Made the highlight reel. I think it was going to be short. Here's that pressure now, man to man. Rowan's, you know, County, 
Bath County and Menifee County in that district they, before they, they got to hurry and get this across. Just do before they go on to the 16th region tournament. Of course, they got to contend with Ashland and Elliott County and West Carter. And West Carter's headed to the All A. They yep. beat Elliott County, so that region is really open to see who goes to Rupp. Yeah, the Comets and Lady Comets will be in Richmond next week. I think Rowan County's got a shot at the 16th region. Really, uh, I mean, they are playing well. I think Ashland may have a little edge, but. Come tournament time, it's wide open. Up oh, here comes Darrell Cross. Challenges Purvis. That's blocking foul, yeah. He tried to get over and uh Darryl Cross. That's four on Purvis. I know it, but let's hope Cross is okay there. Purvis just couldn't quite get back. The speed of Darrell Cross right here, one, two, and Purvis still trying to establish possession. Quincy, uh Robbie Stenzel about to check in here at a moment. He's at the we the court uh scores table and he does not look real he, real uh the aftermath of the way he looks like he's still struggling from yeah. that illness the aftermath of that flu is really getting him. takes a while to get your strength back but he's buddy. a he's a gamer though he'll be right here right to the end yeah he's he's been in and out to get his but see he's he's mr clutch he and rogers well Darryl robbie Cross. robbie robbie does a lot of different things uh for a ball club they take it away, Townsend. This will be a big bucket right here if they can get it. Egan, little floater, got the roll. We hey, got that, that's a bonus when you can get Jason Egan on the drive to get you a bucket. He's known as a shooter. The pressure's starting to pay off. There's Robbie Stenzel. Pressure. What I was getting ready to say about Robbie before that steal is he can be the facilitator and still impact the game. He doesn't have to be the scorer. We're getting down there to the two-minute mark, two-minute warning, shall we say. Just a five-point game. Oh, wow. Rogers up off the glass. I don't even know what to say about that. And we have a full timeout called by Clark County. Let's go back and look at Corey Rogers. He is hemmed in, double teamed right from the get-go here. Another green jersey is going to drop down, and that's Egan. Look at him spin, though, right down the baseline. That's almost too easy, even though it was a little bit of a difficult shot down the stretch. Well, coming up uh, tomorrow night, OVC men's basketball, the Murray State Racers uh, in the St. Louis area in Illinois, but it's Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville. And uh, Thursday night, double dip in uh, Richmond, Kentucky. Austin P. Lady Governors and Governors will take on the Colonels and Lady Colonels at uh, Alumni Coliseum. And then uh, Wagoner Wildcats and the St. X Tigers Friday night from Louisville, Kentucky. And then Saturday, a good one, Austin P. at Moorhead State. That'll be the ladies going at it at 515. That's coming up on Wazoo Sports. A lot of great action coming, but we've still got a Pretty nice 158 to go here. Rowan yeah. County's hanging around. Been a very enjoyable game. This is the game that Clark County did not want to be in down the stretch. They wanted to be able to get out and run and pull away, but Rowan County and Coach Stacker has done exactly what they wanted to do. Keep it down under 60 and get in a half-court game. Coach Stacker chatting with official Keith Morgan. There's a look at Corey Rogers. Had that big bucket a moment ago. I'd say that they're going to start going to Corey a little bit. When it gets down to nitty-gritty time, 44 gets the ball quite a bit. Townsend and Bopper Stenzel. Townsend quickly to the bucket. Zolo might have got a piece of that initially. Well, he had a hand on the rebound and couldn't corral it, and it ends up being Viking ball. Well, every time a play ends, you see Robbie Stenzel kind of gathering himself. You know, we've said I'm not making excuses for the guy because he's he's a gamer. He's going to get out there and play hard for you. Yeah, he's he's not 100 percent. Are they still trying to get his strength back? Hagen from way downtown. Wow. Hey, you let that kid get going. He's got the green light when he enters the gym. I mean, that was that was a deep three. All right, Stenzel. Dangerous pass inside to Daniel. And a block on uh, Hunter. It's still not a bonus, though. They'll have to inbound it. Let's watch Jason Egan, the junior. He's listed as a forward, but he's a shooter, buddy. Get him outside and let him go. Tickle the twine. 
53-49 the score after that three. Wayne is third. Team four. Adam Wing was that last foul, and that's it's his third. Well, they just changed it and gave it to Corey Hunter. His fourth. <laughs> and his fourth. Yeah. I thought it was Hunter, actually. I did, too, until they announced it. Zolo, no good. And, wow, Rowan County is, boy, they, they cannot fought with each control other. it. Wow. They fought with each other there. you got to communicate. There were three green jerseys around that. But when you draw up an inbounds pass and you get Vinny Zolo wide open, that's a shot that's going to go nine times out of ten. Coach Sean Thacker urging his team on. Sees his team may have a chance for an upset here. They're going to have to play a really stellar minute 12. Clock continues to tick. We're getting close to a minute. And well, they've got a couple of fouls to give, so that's actually a smart place to do that. Approaching the minute mark, they've still got one more to give. Coach Humphrey's got to be <laughs> sweating some bullets right now. He's thinking, you know, where's that fire we were playing with just a couple of days ago? That's Stenzel in backcourt. I thought Sean Thacker was going to get out there and play defense with the Vikings himself. He's pleading with, for them to trap right there in the corner. And a whistle. And Coach uh, Humphrey calls a timeout to bail his team out. It's a full timeout. We'll be back. Stay with us. He's a little slice of Italy in Winchester, right down on Boone Avenue. You can call them at 745-2991. And they do have dine-in or carry-out and a convenient pickup window and all the Italian food you can eat. Giovanni's of Winchester. Inside of Rogers, they double-team him, triple-team him, and a reach-in. And that's the foul to give. I think that's going to go on Townsend. You're still going to go for the steal first. But you're going to try to extend this ball game and get you a couple fouls here and send them to the line and, and hope they miss a couple and get out and transition on the rebounds. They don't make a quick steal here. They'll foul immediately. Yep. And they may have fouled the wrong young man, although he's not 100%. And Robbie Stenzel's not the one you want to send to the line. A little over 75% from the line. But he is clutch, as you call him. At the line for one of the most <laughs> Coach Sacker heard me said, what in the world are we fouling him for? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the guy you want to send to the line. And Clark County, and there Stenzel misses it, but Clark County did something interesting. They sent their defense back before the shot. They're already all back and ready. All right, Townsend fakes, pulls up. He's fouled, and it goes. That's what a playmaker like DJ Townsend does for you. He created an opportunity to go to the line. That was one of those shots as a coach, you're saying no, 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 but then yes, 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 as it goes in. There's the contact just enough to get the official to call it, and we got a two-point ball game, and after this could be a one-point game. Josh Bernard, a 6'5 sophomore, number 52, and Tyler Thacker, a number 14, a 6'1 freshman, checked in. They're in there for their defense. We got a one-point ball game. Buckle in, folks. Bopper Stenzel in backcourt. Zolo's Lob the one you want to foul in this, at this point. And a whistle on Adam Wing. You've got Jalen Daniel at 67% from the free throw line. Bopper Stenzel only has shot like a handful of free throws, so we don't really know what he's like in these kind of situations. But Zolo at 63%, Corey Rogers at 60. So it's either Zolo or Rogers that you foul right now. Either way, it's going to be a one possession ball game. If he knocks both of them in, but it's one and one. Rattles at home. Wow. Glad to have you aboard, folks. It's Kentucky right, High School Basketball. It's right where the Vikings wanted to be, down the stretch, within arm's reach here. Came out, wing with a rebound. All right, do you go for the last shot and try to win it? Absolutely. Huh? You, you, you go for the open look, but you try to get, you, you don't necessarily have to have a three. For the three, Townsend, no good. And cut Rogers with the rebound and Rogers a reach in. didn't care who was coming after that ball. He ripped it away from his own teammate. But he wanted that basketball, and you like that late I'll in the game. I'll tell you what, Townsend had a good look. It rattled out. 
I, I think, though, you want to run that offense just a little bit more. I know he, he, he looked open up at the top of the key, but he was – he wasn't quite squared up when he shot it. I mean, that's one where you want to work it around. You still had 13 seconds. That's a tough spot to take that shot that early. Not hating on the shot. Just well, saying he's, he could have worked He's better. their leading scorer. Yep. All right, Egan with the rebound. Down two. They got a chance to tie. You want Townsend. Timeout with uh, six seconds. This is where you draw something up going to the rim. You don't necessarily need a three unless you get Egan coming off a screen. What you want to do is you want to get Cross or Townsend going to the rim to take the contact and maybe get a three-point play. Your best bet is to go to the rim because if they don't foul you, you tie it and you go to overtime. But if you wait and, and you get a, a, a lower percentage from three and it's not Egan, that's not the shot you want. You want to get a playmaker like Townsend or Cross going to the rim. On the other side for Clark County, you got to play smart defense. You, you got to get in front of people. You got to play the passing lanes, but you want to ease off just a little bit unless it's Egan. You got to be right in his shorts. I think if it goes inside, they're going to try to fan it back out to Egan or a cross. But they get paid the coach. There's Coach uh, Sean Thacker in his third year here at Round County. 12 and 3 coming into tonight's ball game. And taking the state's number two ranked team right down to the wire. Yep, he's drawing something up to get to the rim. He, he, on the chalkboard, it was real dark up around the rim. That means he was pointing with that marker, making sure they knew where they, he sure wanted that them to go. The weather radar map. <laughs> <laughs> if it was, it's not looking good. <laughs> but he was pointing at the rim. He said, guys, I mean, I don't know exactly where the screen's going to be set or what play they're running, but I know he was pointing at that rim. You got a freshman going to toss it in. And oh, that's the coach's out. kid, though. You that's smart. Got a timeout coach by, called by Coach Humphrey. And now he wanted to see what they were going to set up in, and now he's going to draw something up defensively, and he's coaching to his kids right now. He's saying, hey, look at me. I want you to play smart defense, no reason to foul here, and get in front of somebody. Don't allow, deny, you got to deny the ball from the playmakers. you got to deny the ball to Cross, Townsend, and Egan. 54-52, Clark County jumped out on top 13-2 in this ball game, and then uh, Rowan went on an 11-0 run to tie the game. The cards were up five at the half, and it looked like Clark County was in pretty good shape with about three minutes to go. They were up 10, maybe three and a half minutes. I think it was 51-41. to 41. It and was then, uh, at the 350 mark. It was 51-41. That memory's not as bad as I thought you it was. You are on it, buddy. <laughs> that was the largest lead since that 11-point lead early in the first quarter. And then Rowan County, as they have done all night, the Vikings have battled back and battled back again against top three team in the state. No matter what poll you look at, top three in the state. And they are they are quite good, and Rowan is uh, bringing their A game here tonight. Now Adam Wing is going to toss it in. Still looking, Jalen Daniel pressured him, and Egan's got it. He falls down. They better hurry, and a quick timeout with .3. Wow. They're going to give him .5. Wow. They're going to give him .5 on the clock. Right there. That Egan, was just good defense. It was great defense by Clark County, but Egan coming away. Let's watch again here. When when Egan catches this ball, he's coming to back toward the baseline, then he has to reface up, and Stenzel's right there. He falls down. Wing gets it, but Wing right there should have tried to turn that corner a little quicker. Jalen Daniel did a great job of getting out in front, and that's what I was talking about earlier, where Clark County, they wanted to get out in front of anybody that gets the basketball. You deny it first, you're going to see him catch it, you get back around and square up, and that's exactly what Stenzel and Daniel did. And the, right now with .5, this has got to be a catch and shoot. The key to the whole defense, though, he had 6'7", Jalen Daniel guarding the inbounds Absolutely. pass. Yep. He could not lob it. He was jumping up and down, and that was just locked down defense by Coach Humphrey's ball club. We've been talking about the length of Clark County, and this is where it definitely comes into the advantage for the Cardinals. They can def defend all these shooters. All right, Quincy, with point five, how, what do you got time to do? You got to have Egan come off a screen on a catch and shoot, or you try a back screen and get a lob down low because they're not necessarily looking for that and send it to overtime. Well, you got Vinny Zolo right in front of Hunter. But I say, a, I say a back screen for DJ Townsend. Somebody screen off Bopper Stenzel there and let DJ go back door. Did he call? 
All right, here we go. Settle in. Adam Wing inbounds. There's Egan. It's blocked. Coach Thacker wants a whistle, and this game is over. What a game. They shake hands at midcourt. He, he wasn't getting after Coach Humphrey. He was getting after your official. Oh, I know that. Corey Rogers closes out and knocks Egan. I mean, there should have been something there. Corey Rogers closed out and was into the shooter. That's a tough break for Rowan. They came in and clawed with a, num a top three team in the state. I tell you what, a measuring stick, they turned out pretty good Rowan County tonight. Yeah, the gauge is registering uh, A-OK -okay for uh, Rowan County. These two teams uh, certainly going to be vying for their respective regional championships. And you can say Clark County survived. Yeah. We'll be back. We just saw a dandy, the number two team in the state, Clark County. Uh, just gets out of here with a win over a very game Rowan County ball club and uh, let's get your comments on the outcome. Well I think it was interesting because both teams came off of long weeks of basketball and didn't have a lot of time to prepare for each other and I think it really benefited Rowan County because they didn't have to think about top three team in the state what what Clark County does well what to do you know scheme wise they were able to just come out and play the way they play slow it down get in the half court let your playmakers play and I think in the end that's what kept them close their defense played well but in the end too much uh, uh, Clark County too much length they, they didn't have a lot of clean looks late when they needed it of course that final three Corey Rogers closed out pretty quick and got a little bit of the body no call uh, but that's the way it rolls sometimes and right here uh, Clark County uh, this is what they did well. They pass the ball around and they get open looks. And that was where Rowan County, they got a few and far between on their open looks. But there were a lot more open looks for Clark County. And they were actually, to tell you the truth, on, honestly be in this game themselves because they turned the ball over quite a bit, Clark County did. But Cross and DJ Townsend, you got to tip their hat, hat off to them. Both of them had 13 apiece. Egan came on strong late, had three three balls. Uh, one of them, that one was pretty deep, but the other one from the other side, that was that was a deep three ball for him. And we saw a game where uh, Robbie Zolo was not up to 100%. Uh, and, Robbie uh, Stenzel. I mean, right. Robbie, Robbie yeah. uh, Stenzel. But if you notice, he came in late. He was one of the key guys He's, on that defensive yeah. stop uh, when they threw it in with about, what, eight seconds, six seconds to go. But uh, yeah. but uh, he he was not 100%. But I tell you what, I'm really impressed with these Rowan County Vikings. Uh, they uh, they played right tit for tat with these uh, cards. And well, they got to feel pretty good. They got to be disappointed. I guess they, they didn't get to win. You all played a win. But uh, if there's such thing as a moral victory and a learning curve, they passed. Well, they they end their seven-game winning streak right here in Winchester, but this is a pretty darn good Clark County team that continues uh, their winning streak to nine, and they uh, they have survived in some situations. They've done well, of course, and here's that final play, and it was a uh, closeout by Corey Rogers that Coach Thacker really wanted that call, but you see Vinny, Vinny Zolo excited to be back in the action, excited to get the win, and it has been it has been Here's one of those uh, kind of games where they really le legitimately survived. And Coach Humphrey is uh, just joining us here at courtside. Well, then I will step aside and let you talk to the winning coach. Coach Humphrey, uh, you jump out 13 to two, and I think you probably had to have an idea with that uh, emotional roller coaster you went through winning the Toyota Classic. You could have a little letdown, but you played a pretty good ball club today and was able to hold on. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I hate to use the word letdown because that takes away from anything that Round County did tonight, and I thought they played really well. They, their kids stepped up, hit big time shots. Uh, they guarded us well. They competed, and they put themselves in position to win. Uh, we were fortunate to get the win tonight, you know, missing some free throws down the stretch. We had way too many loose possessions on the offensive end where we had numbers in transition, uh, too loose with it in the half court. And to be honest, I, that might have been our worst defensive effort of the year. I just, they kind of, they, they got the shots they wanted, and we sat around and was hoping and wishing they would miss. I know uh, when you jumped out early, you did commit quite a few turnovers in the second quarter, and they was able to get back in the ball game. But uh, late in the game, uh, you know, you had a couple of big guys hit some threes, but was that exactly what no. you wanted them to take? I don't think I th it was. No, I think we got, uh, we got a little looser there. We were getting frustrated with not 
Big guy's not getting it inside. Vinny flares out there for a three. At that point in the game, we don't want that. Uh, you know, we were getting to the, you know, I think it was indicative that every other game we've been playing, we've been getting to the double bonus late in the third quarter and in a well.